<laughs> okay then. I call to order this workshop of the Caribbean City Commission. It's Thursday, February the 10th, 2022, um, 1.32 p.m. And the workshop is being conducted here in the Caribbean City Hall Chambers. Uh, the prayer and pledge are not required for a workshop, so we'll just move right into it. And I want to thank you all uh, for coming. Uh, we appreciate it. And uh, also for thank you, uh, silencing your phones. And anyone wishing to speak, please raise your hand to be recognized by myself and then come to the podium at, in just a moment. <laughs> He's anxious. John is anxious. Come to the podium with your input. But first, first we're going to, uh, all of us will have an opportunity if we want to, to identify, describe the problems that, that we see with the issues surrounding the uh, Marine Street boat ramp the, um, and the fish cleaning station and, and all of the river, river walk park there in that area um, of those two facilities. And, you know, if you've got uh, something good you want to say about it, do that too. You know, it doesn't all have to be negative. Once we've identified the problems and the issues, then we'll all have an opportunity to offer suggestions on how to help solve these problems and, and uh, the things that we've identified and, and ask questions too. Uh, Commissioner Mathis has already had a good question that he'll bring up during the meeting. And then all after we've done this, uh, we'll, we'll need to identify funding sources if it, if it seems like we're going to have to spend some money on something and, and ways to enact and enforce the suggestions that we've presented. So this is not a regular meeting. It's, it's merely a workshop, so action cannot be taken while we're here. Motion and votes won't be called for. But uh, this board may agree in principle to some of the things and suggestions that we talk about today, or this board may decide that we need another workshop. So uh, we'll just we'll just go from here. And um, if anyone wants to start out, I see Mr. John has already raised his hand if he wants to come to the podium and uh, identify and, and point out some issues of concern, and then we'll just move on from there. What I was going to suggest is um, I brought uh, another thumb drive with even more pictures. I thought we could go through them and I'll just kind of tell you what they are and what some of the issues are. That's a good one to start with. I know that you'll agree with me too, Brenda. See that not only do we, are there carcasses in the water, see the poop there on the railing and on the little seawall. Among the problems of having the fish thrown over the fence into the water right there by the cleaning station, or any or the trash all along that whole area, is it makes the birds sit there on that railing. And when they see there's the birds, that's why I took that picture. Well, that means it's going to make it look messy. So there's a lot of issues there. That's the cleaning station and some shots of the cleaning station. Um, if you want to keep going all them. And stop here. See this sign here? That does no good at all. It's like, you know, saying, I know left when I went to the first meeting, we are talking about having a 35 mile an hour somewhere, and, it's, and no one does it. <laughs> and it's, it says right there, there's, there's statutes about it. I mean, look at the carcasses and the junk out there. That's when the tide's out, so you see them more. That's when the pelicans are come out there to. And the problem that I have with it is that I end up doing all the rescues or most of the rescues in Franklin County is that I'm getting pelicans with carcasses stuck in their pouches and they can some of them can't even fly off so they're easy to catch but some of them can and they, but they can't eat and they go somewhere and starve to death and that's just not right you know they, there was an eagle that somebody dumped their carcasses right up there by the park up there that used to be the island view <coughs> And an eagle came down there after the carcasses and got clipped by a car, and that was the end of him. You know, we just, it's just kind of wrong. Right? But it's trash, too. And there's two shots there that, you know, along the way you can see the trash. And I even zoomed in on it. It's like, this is this is over closer to the boat ramp, where people just come in and get out of their boat and go and throw their trash right there in the grass. And then they go over there and, and get the hose by the fish cleaning station and clean their boats like, you know, um, just more carcasses. Um, 
there's one shot that shows it, but it's the, it goes from, I mean, look at how much junk there is in. All right, that's towards the boat ramp, and you can see all the trash that's over there towards the boat ramp. And going back the other way towards the pavilion, it's the same thing. Even people walk over there on the other side of that little building there, uh, that little white building, and then throw stuff out too. You can see there's all that. So anyway, that's the main thing I wanted to say is that you can see what the problem is and the solution, you know, to me would be either to get really serious with videoing or some kind of enforcement or go, why do, you know, why do we need to supply a, uh, a fish cleaning station if it's just going to be abused like that? If there was deep water there, it wouldn't be a problem. You know, the carcasses would go to the bottom and then the sharks and the pinfish or whoever is can eat them, but it's a problem here because it's right there. So it would need, either need to be have another fish cleaning station somewhere where that's not happening or get rid of it unless somebody has some other ideas. But that's my two cents. Okay. Remember those pictures, John? The fish, right next to the fish When cleaners. you took them? When, when, when? when? <laughs> Various times. Okay. I was down there day, and one of them was just like, what that? Well, not that one, the one with the cups and stuff. Yeah. Because that tie it's out a little bit. It, it's, it's pretty, you could go any day. If we went down there, the, there would, wouldn't be as many carcasses, because it's, there's not many people going fishing with the, with the weather. If you go out there during snapper or, or grouper season, and there's a lot more carcasses. So it depends, but there's always some. If we went today, there'd be some, but we went a week from today, it wouldn't matter. There'd always be trash, and there'd always be carcasses. And do any of the carcasses that you've come across have uh, lines and hooks in them? Uh, no, which I wouldn't expect that, you know, when they clean them. Yeah. But, but on the other hand, just in the last, you know, month or so, we've probably rescued 10 or 12 pelicans that were alive that had hooks and lines in them. This time of year, last two years ago in June, I mean in January and February, just because it gets cold, and the last year's baby pelicans, it's like that they have a hard time learning how to hunt by just swimming along the edge of the water, and it's a different kind of hunting. And otherwise, they starve. And I've, I've rescued like ten or twelve last year. I got over sixty, and this year we've already started getting a lot. I've, I've rescued probably 10 in the last uh, two weeks. They were just starving ones, too. Oh, and by the way, I did talk to, I saw A.J. Smith yesterday, and he said he, they were sending somebody here to talk about the video possibilities, and um, uh, the FWC said they were going to send somebody, too. So, I mean, they said they were, so. Okay, all right, thank you. And then uh, I had some pictures. We, we showed them last time, some pictures I took myself. Some pictures were taken by the uh, past executive director of the chamber. Uh, one picture was taken by a past police officer. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just more of the same. Um, so it's, it's an, an ongoing. I mean, all, and, and that's, that's what you get right there um, in the summer. It, it gets, that's pretty rough. And for me, uh, I'll just go ahead and say, since we looked at that picture, uh, we're advertising the River Walk as a tourist location. And the CRA and grants, we've had uh, water management district grants, we've got a uh, community development block grant right now going on about to start construction down there, $650,000. The CRA has put a lot of money in it over since maybe 2014, maybe close to a million dollars. And still we have that, and we can't get tourists to come down there like um, over at uh, Apalachicola. Uh, you go on their river walk, you're not, you're not going to see anything like that. And so that's, that's enough. And now I want to hear Miss Donna, if you'll come forward, Miss Donna. <coughs> My name's Donna Owens. Uh, I have a question. If you get rid of the cleaning table, it's not going to stop 
people from throwing their trash somewhere. Yes. And and he said the bird got hit on the road. If you if you don't have a place to get rid of this the scraps, mm -hmm. you're going to have an ongoing problem. Mm -hmm. And the cleaning station is not the issue, I don't think. And you already spent the money in the cleaning station. And I don't I know the outsiders use it, but the locals use it too because we use it for benefits when we're cleaning a lot of stuff or helping people with the benefits or like the youth. So I think it's a good thing. We just need to uh, come up with a way because either way, you're going to be dealing with this issue. Right. right. And, and it's going to be bad at snapper season. Mm -hmm. And we're, we advertise as a fishing village for sure. Right. Carabelle is. And, and uh, the more we advertise, the more people come here. And right. the Tourist uh, Development Council advertises Carabelle heavily. It's, it's getting uh, busy. In, in um, get Birmingham, worse. Atlanta, Nashville as a fishing village a right. place to come and go fishing and we you know we do need a place to to take care of this or some way to to manage it <laughs> what was Appalachia doing what are they doing to to fix their problem they they have the I deep water uh, they uh, have deep water but they right. have Scipio Creek I don't know if they have a fi I you know this is one of the few public fish cleaning stations in Franklin County yeah. Scipio Creek. Franklin I was County. over there today and I didn't see a fish cleaning and, but even if you get rid of the fish cleaning station, you're still going to have to come up with a way to get rid of the waste. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to have the problem. They're going to dump it in the woods. They're going to dump it on the road. They're going to dump it in the cemetery. They're going to dump it somewhere. So what I said something, but he said the DEA, but are people getting hurt with the uh, grinding pump? Uh -huh, yeah, um, we talked about that in the past. Then y'all had some issues that it wouldn't work, or uh, well, it has to go. The the carcasses go to the uh, wastewater treatment plant, and the wastewater treatment, uh, the water and sewer superintendent says that that puts live bacteria into the plant, and then that messes up his. He has live bacteria there in in those big. Um, uh, Container those big wells that hold all of the wastewater. See, I don't, I'm not familiar and with that. Yeah, okay. uh, that um, has live bacteria in it, and that's what eats up the solid waste. This live bacteria, and when you put live, a lot of live bacteria in it, it messes up the balance of of what they need out there to for their bacteria. He calls them bugs because you can see them crawling up on the side of the wall of those big tanks. But if, if you had it where it would pump all the way out in the deeper water? That can work. I, we have Courtney and I. Russell has an email from DEP that says they won't allow it. Oh, they, they won't, won't allow, it? allow it? Okay. At one time, Courtney and I thought that we could pump they, it out. They did like, tell us that at one time, that we had to pump it so far into the river. Right. They came back and told Russell that it's not allowed. Okay. Okay, so you can't do that, so you can't use the, the pump. Uh-huh. And let Mr. Let's let Mr. Russell here talk about that. Yeah, I'll, I'll just be brief because I know I'm going to get another comment. Uh -huh. um, yeah, in a nutshell, his most recent email back to me was no, they would not allow it. Now, before years ago, and this has probably been six, seven years ago when we inquired about it, they thought that it might be a possibility, but we, we would have to put a, a force main like way out, like I don't know how far quarter mile, a half mile, I don't know, but we'd have to pump it out um, into into deeper water. So no expense. Yeah. Yes, that would be an expense. <laughs> and the the feeding of the, even even if we, I, I and John had a, a suggestion, and I've thought about it before, is to relocate the station, relocate the cleaning station, maybe at the eastern end of the, of the uh, parking lot, the boat ramp parking lot. But a lot of folks think they don't understand the seriousness of jump, dumping the carcasses there. And we have two problems now, the carcasses and the, and the trash. And they don't understand how it affects the shorebirds when, when they do that. And in fact, there's a, an advertisement from the TDC today on Facebook, and it shows two birds sitting on that, that railing right there at our fish cleaning sink, two pelicans biting. And the caption was, don't worry, there's plenty of fish to go around. And so people don't understand <coughs> that it's really causing a problem to do that. And even at the fish cleaning station, I'm wondering if it was over on the east side of the boat ramp, would people still carry some fish pieces, fish scrap over to attract birds because they like to see, just like they feed the seagulls on the beach. Well, I know I see one afternoon I was riding down to C30 and somebody had backed up 
and was throwing them right there off the ramp. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I know they're going to throw it mm -hmm. somewhere, uh -huh. just like the deer. If you look at the deer parks, they, mm -hmm. they everywhere. Yeah. But I mean, if you could move the station to keep it, if it worked, but still you're going to have to have something there, aren't you? Can uh, you if you put something there to haul them off, but where would you haul them? What would you do with it? That's what we have talked about. So, uh, I mean, there's so okay. many questions, you know. Yeah. Okay. That's just okay. my <laughs> All right. But you can come back now. This isn't a regular okay. meeting. Okay. I'm listening. To the podium. I just like uh, just an idea. Okay. Uh, tell, us, here, tell us your name. My name's Clay Rutland. Clay? Yeah. I've been here in care about about two years now. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rutland put in for the position of the boat ramp attendant when we advertised it last fall. Okay. That's right. And I'm sure I'm going to get that job, too. Okay. <laughs> I can help out with that enforcing whatever y'all want but how about we were talking about the grinding pump how about making chum these guys that go out on the deep water mm -hmm. yeah. take the carcasses grind them up yeah put them in buckets the city can make money selling i mean that's just mm -hmm. an idea uh -huh. um, but it there it is a problem down there i frequent it twice a week i fish down there I love it, but uh, something does have to be done with it, for sure. That's about all I got. Okay. It was just well, an idea. All right. You have so, any ideas got, about the garbage? Mm -hmm. well, like Since you said, go down there a lot? If y'all put me on, I'll keep it clean. <laughs> There's your solution right there. <laughs> <laughs> and that ain't no joke. Okay. I love being there anyway. Uh -huh. And, and, you know, we would put more garbage cans down there, but it, it tends to, uh, because we don't have mandatory household garbage service, that right. people bring their household garbage there, and that's that's an issue as well. Well, I tell you what, I can help y'all, whatever y'all decide to do, I'd be glad to help you with it. Okay, all right, thank you. And I see Miss Lisa Keith lucas I would like to just real quick, when, when Mr. Hartman was in earlier, he, he said that he had talked to a couple of people that were interested in the chum so that uh -huh. you know they they would be willing to take it and you know so that might be something you'd have to bid out because you couldn't give it to this one and not this one they had to come up with a proposal or um, qualifications or something but he said that he had talked to people that were interested and then they would come and take it away take away the, the waste and make chum yeah. and, okay mm -hmm. okay miss lisa uh, Lisa Keith Lucas, I live here in Caravelle. I just have a question. Um, given that I end up on Marine Street setting up for festivals, mm -hmm. um, and uh, oftentimes part of that process is to go up and down the street and to pick up the trash that tends to get out on the street. And you can see it if you go to the old fish house, the big brick building, and you can see that there's trash um, over the side there. It, is it possible that this is a much larger problem that has to do with the lack of public receptacles in the public areas on Marine Street? And I wondered, did putting that bear-proof can at McKissick Beach help solve some of the problems that they were having at McKissick Beach now that there's actually a public access garbage can at McKissick Beach, just like there is at the Carabelle Beach? that really, since we're talking about a place where a lot of people tend to walk, they walk up and down, they have a to-go cup or the kind of thing that comes out of a restaurant and the like, and there is absolutely nowhere to put those. Now, yes, that raises a whole other question about um, public abuse and using uh, public trash cans for household garbage, and obviously that would have to be dealt with, but they're really, we really lack the public infrastructure for disposal of waste, and so people tend to just simply drop it, and it ends up off, you know, into the into the water. So yeah, the the fish that's a whole other problem, and I think this chum idea is fascinating. But aren't we looking at something that's even bigger than that? So, it's possible, and we do have a, a bear proof garbage can at <coughs> one of our fishing piers. I don't want to announce it. Well. We're not a, yeah, well, this, this is going to go on video because I don't want it to be, it's not used for household garbage, that, that, that bear proof can, mm -hmm. so I really don't want to identify where that is. <clears throat> but uh, maybe, you know, bear proof garbage cans, what do they run about? 
thirteen hundred each. They're very expensive. But the you know the CRA and the boat ramp could go together and fund something like that. Uh, do they have bear proof garbage cans that have a smaller opening where regular kitchen bags can't go in? I believe so. They have all different styles. Um, once at Caramel RV Resort, you can't put them in that park across, and you can't get no household garbage in. They're small. They have a smaller opening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Miss Tamara, and she's going to need a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to not having a microphone in front of me. Um, Yes, it is. So I know I'm not the oldest person here, but I thought I might could share a little history. Um, I don't know who is that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, I know my husband's older than I am, so I'll just I wouldn't, I wouldn't even go to say Mr. Frank was older than Cal. My goodness, Cal. Cal's like the oldest person around. <laughs> not today. So, <laughs> Back in 2004, 2005, we started the, the writing up of the Waterfront Partnership Program that the city got in 2007. And part of what the city did during that two-year process was to talk to 500 people that lived here and another 500 that visited here. And we got all kinds of information about what people wanted and what they liked and all that. And we tried to coordinate the grants that were available then with the, what we had to go with at that point. Um, so we put in the boat ramp. We put in the different aspects of, of stuff. When this fish cleaning station was planned in the grant, it called for having a grinder pump that the that you put the fish carcasses in, and they had one out at the boat club, and it did not. Um, it, they used it, but it wasn't it wasn't working consistently, so that was a little discouraging. But we had a grant to buy one, and at the time when we could have bought it, we couldn't get one that was dependable that had a good warranty on it. So it ended up not being included. Plus, everybody was worried some child would fall into it. And I, I never could picture how that would work. <laughs> it was only in the mind of people that had not seen one that they could have stuffed a child in here. But, um, <laughs> but how about a cat? Well, you know, <laughs> or a bird. I mean, there, I mean, there are mean and awful There's people kind of everywhere. But, um, but the fish clean station was um, quite different than it is today because it's devolved over the past um, 10 years and, what is that, 20 years? And it's now just down, it, it used to have all kinds of features that are no longer there because it's basically been destructed down to just what will last. But um, garbage cans were set up everywhere in that grant attached to the walls. Mm -hmm. They were not stand on the ground household. They weren't the big kind like you put your household garbage in. They were the kind that you put trash in that, are, that were down by the boat ramp. They were there by the steps going down to the staging dock. They were up there by the pavilion. They were, they were actually out on the pavilion. So there were, might have been as many as 10 garbage receptacles, and it's true, we did have problems with people putting household garbage in it. Um, it wasn't done as much as originally as it got to be done. As the garbage cans got bigger, the household garbage problem got bigger, because it was hard to put them. You couldn't put much household garbage in a little can about, you know, small can. But it does require they be emptied. Mm -hmm. It does require that there be staff time to do that or um, a designated person to do it or whatever. So as I think the garbage is one issue. The other 
issue we've had twice a year we've sponsored a cleanup of the waterfront area. The last two years, both, both times each year, all four times, the tide has been very high at the particular designated time of the cleanup. So that normally if the tide's low, people get down on that land and walk along and pick up the trash. And we keep it, usually we do it in the spring right before the festivals and we do it in the fall with the International Coastal Cleanup. But for the last two years, four times, we've had a high tide and not been able to get the trash. We can see it, but you can't get to it because it's got water. So one of the things that could be done is to schedule some specific garbage cleanup for um, that area around the whole you know, the whole boardwalk, the whole, from the boat ramp up to the end of the, the fence there. The whole 300 feet, right, really. Right, right. Uh -huh. That once you, you know, then, and then you would ask people, bring your kayak, bring your canoe, come over and let's get out there and specifically target this trash, not go clean up the woods across. I mean, we try to clean up everything, but we do something real targeted for that area. And certainly, um, I think we could produce 20 people that would be willing to come down and help with that. If we could find a, a time when the tide is out, that's a decent time of day on a Saturday, that's not in the middle of like the Super Bowl. Well, I was thinking, I was thinking sooner than later, but yeah, not in July. But you know, that, that is another thing that could be an immediate cleanup of the problem, but I don't think the trash part of it is going to be solved until there are receptacles because I'm, like several people have said, I've seen folks walk along, they got a cup from where they had lunch and and they, sometimes they throw it somewhere in it's a can and it's, yeah. So, and I think that's part of the bigger trash problem, but I will say I go by that fish cleaning station almost twice a week all year long, walking home. And the people I see there using it for the most part are local people. And I watch them. Um, I mean, it's anybody not seen Greg Daniels out there with a mess of mullet, cleaning mullet, getting the row when it has row, and putting the carcass of stuff in a bucket. He takes the fish and puts it in something. I mean, he's very organized, but he carries his trash off. Now, I don't know where he takes it to, but I know that there are a lot of local fellas and gals that go down there and clean the fish that they catch and they to eat and or to sell to, to other places. And I know that they, they're they pretty good about taking their fish waste away. But Some I, people use that for uh, fertilizing their gardens. Exactly. Once the Caribbean Boat Club, Club got rid of their fish grinder, mm -hmm. They, uh, their gardener uses it in their gardens. That's mm -hmm. why it looks so nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I think not anymore. Oh. Uh, yeah, the grinder just seemed to have a lot. Now, I, I, I'm sorry to hear that the, the department has changed its point of view because the solution that we were going after back in 2007 was to actually grind it into not into the city water but into um, a hose that went, I don't know what you call it, but a conduit that went down and, and out the front in the water and out to the middle of the river. And then it was agreed at that time that that would be helpful for getting fish up the river and feeding the various people and stuff, but obviously that's not the case anymore. But that was true when we, when they gave us the grant to create this, because it was an environmental protection grant. Um, anyway, so, so my two cents worth just for the history of it. And um, I, I do think we've got to separate <coughs> fish carcass problem from the garbage problem, because even if we outlawed fishing in Caravelle, God forbid, but you know, um, we still have a garbage problem. 
you think we have a mask problem if you outlaw fishing in Carolina? <laughs> <we'll help. laughs> I mean, we would never think to do well, that. No. We would We've got never. laws against living. And to me, throwing them corpses over that rail mm -hmm. is more worse than throwing a garbage bag over. It's true. I have caught a many pounds of fish out of that gun over mm -hmm. the years. I have never put one of nothing over that rail. Mm -hmm. It goes home with me, and I take care of it. Mm -hmm. But I do agree with Donna. It's it's like the deer, the deers in all over the forest and down the river that they took one ham off of it and left the whole thing floating down the river. And we used to have a lot of that until we started having designated dumpsters in the woods, which didn't solve the problem, but it helped. And I wonder if we can't come up with some kind of designated um, <coughs> fish part collect, you know, collection system. I, I, and certainly if we collected, you know, uh, um, fish carcasses in, in garbage cans or uh, dumpsters, that would have to be taken away daily. You know, that would have maybe it's twice sad. a day. On, more than that, Isn't on busy that days. Um, so, uh, and there's, there's other things. Uh, Mexico Beach uh, has a cooler that they put their um, fish carcasses in, mm -hmm. a big walk-in cooler. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, uh, uh, but I don't know how they do that. I don't know. Uh, I did contact. I guess. I, okay. I guess. Okay. Um, so the way they the way that cooler operates is they have um, they have buckets inside the cooler. Uh huh. Yes. So you, and they'll they'll set them out by the fish cleaning station. Mm -hmm. So as someone cleans their fish, the carcass goes in the bucket, and then they put the bucket in the cooler. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of buckets, so that you know the cooler. It's a walk-in cooler, and they'll fill. They'll, they'll have buckets in there. Mm -hmm. And there's shelving in there. Right. So it's yeah. right. It's like a. Um, and then the fishermen come by, and they'll take a bucket, and use it for chum. Oh, so hard. it's free to the fishermen, and that's how they're disposed of. That's how it's disposed of. Um, so that's that's about the extent of what I, of what okay. I know there. And they must but, have someone, maybe like on parks and recs or something, that comes by and cleans it, maintains it. I would think so. That, that right. kind of thing. Right. Um, Hose out the buckets on occasion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I have Greg and I have been over there and seen that uh, set up before Hurricane Michael. Um, after, right after Hurricane Michael, the cooler was way off in the woods, about a half mile. But that, I, but I think they, this is the new cooler the new as it was reconstructed. Yeah. And uh, it, it was full. It was full of all kinds of fish carcasses in there. And, and organized. It seemed like the people that were using it respected it. So, you know, we have to have power. You wouldn't have a, a stinky mess like that, but you, you know, now, I don't know how, I, I was told that the FWC was funding that project, but I contacted um, uh, some folks at the FWC and no, they're not, they're not, they did not fund that. So it must be something from Mexico Beach. They charge uh, boat ramp fees over there. They could be using their boat ramp fees. Certainly they have more tax revenues than we do because they're property values. And, so they can, they can fund it, but you know, maybe we can too. And I do believe Russell had a price in his yeah. email that um, he had estimated being about twenty-five thousand for the cooler right. to set it up. And well, that, that's uh, yeah, total total installed cost of twenty-five thousand. Now that one. It looks like they've got the poles up because it was the, the previous one was under cover as well. Under so you pole could, and, and it looks like they were doing that there. They've got the poles up. They just haven't put the roof on it yet. Right. Um, FEMA is funding the reconstruction after Michael. So that's that's, that's how that's how it's being funded. Uh -huh. to, the, the rebuild that is. I don't know how it was originally funded. <clears throat> Does a DEP still fund? Um, recreational projects it used to I don't know if it still does I'm not sure if they uh, <coughs> they fund recreational projects as a grant you know like until they run a park or the sands park but you have to score so many points and I don't know that we can just do a fish so it's court. not like a something other than like a FERDAP grant right we have to find 
Um, I, I did do a little plan. Yeah. So from from where the, the there's the sidewalk there that leads up to the fish cleaning station. So the fish cleaning station's on the right side of the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the red would be an open area where something like a cooler, walking cooler, could go. Do you think just, it just an idea. Cover? Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah, just protect it from the elements. Right. You could also attach a ice distribution where they can buy ice, help pay for the electricity and stuff. If we had power down there, we could get one of those ice trucks like they have at Janelin's, and that would be extra fun for what you just said, paying for all those. See how so that would be a perfect spot for All right, do we, do we have, okay, John, if you'll just come forward so we can hear you on the microphone. In my asking around, uh, one person told me that back in time when they were, when he knew about, they had the same kind of problem with scallops over there in like Cape San Blas and Port St. Joe, and that they had some kind of stuff, you know, liquid kind of stuff, that they had a barrel there next to where the people were cleaning their scallops, because, you know, they have their seasons for that too, and that people could throw the scallops in this barrel, and that the liquid that was in there wasn't toxic, and it wouldn't, I mean, you, it wouldn't, somebody drank it, which obviously you wouldn't, but it wouldn't hurt you, but that it did, over time, dissolve the scallop remains and the somewhat shells and that then and sitting over next to the cleaning station there that it didn't smell and that they only had to then they could take that and it was okay you know for the uh, rule wise but what was left that they could actually take it to the dump and it wouldn't hurt anything so I didn't ever I, I was hoping after we see we'd follow up with saying they were going to come here to see if they knew about what that liquid was or any other versions of that, but it might be worth trying to ask around and find out from somebody over there in, in that area if that still happens or what do they do in scallop season too. But that's just something I thought of when we were talking about this because that sounds like a good idea too. Well, one other thing is like we're talking about putting more garbage cans and I think that that definitely can help. But if you if you left here, you went down there and saw the there's a there is a garbage can right there next to the boat ramp. You know they can get out of the boats and just put it in a bag and put it in the garbage can. And I've never seen that garbage can filled. And I go down there, you know, a lot. And but they get out of their boat and instead of walking up those stairs and putting it in that garbage can, they throw it right there. I mean they're they're just as close to the garbage can as they could be. Mm -hmm. They probably some of them walk right by. So that's that lo that location of that garbage can couldn't be any closer. It couldn't be any better. And people are still ignoring it. Uh -huh. So it, it's just kind of like a laziness or whatever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that everybody's that way. I mean, it, probably a lot of other people are on the garbage side of it. I would think that uh, maybe have another sign that says you are. You know, AJ had come up with some signs where other people could put their household garbage in the next to the old high school. And, it's, and it said, uh, you are being, you're on video camera. Uh -huh. And if you, uh, you know, and then he put on Facebook where they busted a couple of people, but instead of doing that, we just put, you are on video camera, have a sign there, and then have pictures of a couple of people with their, you know, their faces do kind of blacked out how they did and stuff <laughs> to, to make it think it's really happening. Yeah. It might work. Uh, didn't it happen behind bars? I think we, and you just touched on it there, John, that we have a, a lot of people in this area and other areas too that do not worry about what they do with their garbage. Uh, if you live over where, come down where we live on 12th Street, there'll be packages of styrofoam boxes and food. I picked up a bag this morning that had corn, grits, 
and Oprah. And, and when I picked it up, it, it all fell through. <laughs> and I picked it up one at a time and put it in my little basket and brought it back. But there's just a lot of people that do not have the courtesy to consider other people and they figure just drop it wherever they want to, whatever they want to. And I don't know any cure to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, they, they used to have cures for it back in when this country was first started. <laughs> it's, it's sort of a thing like that with a little hole and a little... <laughs> <laughs> Put your head through it, your arm. Put your head through it. <laughs> and that, that would, as they would say, that, that would learn them a lot. <laughs> but, uh, and I don't know how to deal with that. Uh, there's, you know, the training and, the, and it's just a lot of background that we're dealing with here and, and they just feel like they can throw it wherever they want to and, you know, you can drive down the road and see them throwing that stuff out of the truck or the car. And, uh, <laughs> well, I don't think it's, it's, it's a mixture of, the, mm -hmm. of visitors and, and people that live here and, and also uh, uh, Commissioner Walton, or excuse me, Past Commissioner Walden and I know that uh, a lot of DOC folks, they've got their their road, that Ryan Drive, their stuff goes out left and right on mm -hmm. their way. And then when they get on 67, all the way up mm -hmm. to, uh, to the DOC. So, but then visitors do it too. So uh, you see it all out on 98. But we have been, we've identified the two main issues which we knew already is the, the illegal trash dumping and then the, the illegal carcass fish waste dumping. Uh, we've had like suggestions of putting videos up, um, put the carcasses out in deep water, but they'd have to go really deep, uh, relocate the fish cleaning station um, because we need a and we need, it's been said that we need a place to uh, get rid of the fish carcasses, which we do, even if, if the city were to collect them in garbage cans, we need a way to get rid of it. Making chum, sell, uh, letting folks bid to get chum, or put it in a walk-in cooler, um, and, and let folks trade that out, um, you know. Um, public receptacles, bear-proof cans have been suggested. Um, grinder pump, uh, send it to the wastewater treatment plant, but we'd have to really check up with Charlie on that, you know, because we could be getting a, a lot of fish waste in the summertime um, out to the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, schedule um, garbage pickups for the shoreline, uh, just concentrate solely on the Riverwalk Park shoreline, and um, and someone has said that we need, we need receptacles. Several people have said that trash receptacles. So, are there are there any further comments right this minute? To you know, yes, Miss Donna. What John said sound like a good thing. If it is safe and you could put it in there to dissolve, then it wouldn't cost the city money to put in a cooler or something. But I don't know much about it. But that well, somebody could reach out to them and. I don't know if anybody's tried talking to anybody. Like, I mean, they, they've got to have the same situation that they have to deal with in lots of other places, like from Cedar Key to St. Mark's to mm -hmm. Destin, I mean, there's Panama City, or I mean, maybe it'd be worth a little research if somebody was willing to do it <coughs> to see if we can find some other places. Because the, the, I like the idea of the trading out, you know, carcasses and stuff. It'd be expensive to set it up, but there yeah. could be grant money to do that. But, <coughs> the, is, but the, the, the barrels with the solvent in it that's not toxic, that sure be easy, a lot easier to do. So it might be worth a little more research in a uh, larger area. Yeah. Uh, do the commissioners have, have any suggestions or ideas, or have, have y'all heard anything that, that you like? I was hoping we could do the grinder because I talked to a lot of people and that's what everybody said just put a grinder down there but <coughs> I, I will say this about that um, when when I initiate some conversations with DEP you know this is kind of outside the box apparently they don't deal with it very often so they they have to ask certain people and depending on who you talk to you may get a different answer so the fact that 
one person told me it's not allowed. Um, we may get a different answer if we ask someone else. So I, I don't want to discount okay. the possibility. It, it, it could be possible. Um, we just have to dig a little deeper. Okay. And, and we can dig a little deeper, and uh, a grinder is not going to be cheap either. I believe that the one that they were selling there is at uh, the boat club, and it was used $5,000 when, when they were getting rid of it. And then it has to be maintained because it's a piece of operating mm -hmm. um, equipment, and it might have to have supervision. And would you allow people to use it 24 hours a day? You know, uh, so it, there would be some. I mean, it's not. It's a solution for sure, but not necessarily a perfect, a perfect solution. Mm -hmm. And um, so you, you'd have to have power for that, and water, power and water too. Kind of like the garbage disposal, in a way. Can I say one more thing? Sure. sure. You just gave me another idea. Is that there's an organization called Or Organization of Artificial Reefs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they might. We contacted them. They might be willing to if we found a way to collect the carcasses. You know, have it put the right places and even frozen, which we necessarily need as big a receptacle as that big one. Just and. They have an understanding with them that, that on a some schedule they would come pick up the carcasses and whatever, not the garbage, just, and because they have all these artificial reefs and they might want to be have somebody that goes around and and puts them on the reefs, which is just going to enhance fishing on the artificial reefs too. And they, so they would take care of what we do with it after we get it frozen or ground grinding it or whatever. Now, if you had a walk-in cooler, these folks that are with uh, the Organization of Artificial Reefs could just come over and, and right. get some uh, carcasses. Whenever. They might be willing to, to contribute towards it. Even. They might. <coughs> so they, they do yeah. fundraisers and get big money. Okay, could, Greg? Could you check with Mexico Beach and see what it costs to operate that walk-in cooler, you know, the power? Because you're going to have to pay that. But it might, in the long run, might be cheaper than having somebody down there monitoring it, you have to pay them to monitor unless you had a volunteer, but you know, that might be an idea if you were going to go that route. But if you were going to do that, I think that old fish cleaning station there is in pretty rough shape. None of the drains work on it. I mean, it'd be nice if you could just redo it and do something just like they've got there in Mexico Beach, covered, a place to clean it, a place to put them away, and then you know, just, just redo it if you can get the money. But. Well, that fish cleaning, the, the drains, they don't, they cut the drains <coughs> off and it just drains yeah. right on their feet uh, because um, I guess it was stopping up. The scales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, do, do, does anyone else, do you have any suggestions, ideas, or? I have one that I'd like to add, but because I listen, just sitting back listening to everyone, I have found in my lifetime the biggest thing to handling some of the issues that we're talking about is deterrence. And we're going to rehab, we're going to be spending money down there on our grant on rehabbing some of that area. And particularly at the fish station, in our process of rehabbing where our fence is along the bulkhead, and I this is what I see fishermen doing is they clean their fish and they have a bucket of carcasses and they look around like that and it's convenient to walk to that rail and dump it over. If that fence was a little higher and more neater along that whole area there and our signage letting everyone know that it's illegal to do that and there are penalties for it. It would make them think twice about trying to walk down there a couple hundred feet and dumping carcasses and getting caught. So in the process, if that fence right there was a little higher, not easy and convenient for them to dump over the edge, if that's a deterrent, that's the way I see it. And our signage that we have down there for enforcement and for the illegality of it, maybe are a little bolder, a little larger. Some of the suggestions that was made by people that were 
watching you on camera, etc. Try to deter it as much as we can. And uh, I'm very interested in, in, I say very interested, I still would be excited that if we could put the scraps out in the deeper water. Uh, I grew up here when the entire riverfront was just totally inundated with fish houses and cleanings and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all the scraps went back in the water. And uh, the natural predators took care of those scraps. Uh, and Apalachicola was even mentioned. Uh, Apalachicola has one advantage where their riverfront park is, is when you walk to the edge of it, it's in deep water where there's high tide or low tide. It's deep water. And I know some of the owners of the fish houses on each side of Riverfront Park in Apalachicola, and some of their scrap still goes in the water. And uh, it's just deep water. Mm -hmm. And there's not a low area on low tide for that stuff to accumulate, where the birds can get to it, people can see it, and it smells, etc. So anyway, if we can deter dumping along those areas where when the tide's low, the ground's shown, and the fish trimming and scraps could not be put there, and the birds could get to them, and the smell could be seen. That's just an idea to try to raise that fence enough in a nice manner to where it's not convenient for the people to dump, because I can see that. You stand in there cleaning the fish, you finish cleaning the fish, and it's just a foot or two over there. Well, nobody's gonna catch me real quick, because if I dump it, how are they going to prove I was the one that dumped it? Okay. But if they have to go somewhere to dump it, then maybe they'll carry their stuff with them. Some of these other ideas aren't bad ideas either, but those are, those are the ones that I'm trying to think about that are less demanding in services, which is money. And, uh, but we may have to do that. We may have to do that. And another thing I thought about while we were talking about the cooler, and I don't know that the crabbers, we still have crabbing industry people working in the county, whether they would be interested in some of those trimmings or not, but some of those crabbers may or may not be interested in those trimmings for baiting their traps, their crab traps. It's a possibility, I don't know that. And it may be too bulky for them to handle, I don't know, but it's a possibility. But anyway, that's just some of the things I was thinking about. And the trash cans, it was mentioned, going to the garbage. I kind of lean against putting out more receptacles. And the reason why is I've had professional experience with those receptacles. And the more I put out, or I had employees to put out, or had the organization to put out in some of the parts we had, the more we put out, the more garbage we collected. And not that they could, didn't just put it in the can, couldn't get it in the can. They just, if they couldn't get it in the can, they just set it all around the can because their mindset was somebody's going to pick it up because they're going to come and pick this can up. So the more of them we put out, the more or more we had put out, the more trash we collected. But, but that's an idea. I do understand that. And Mr. Cow hit the nail on the head, in my opinion, uh, with. Uh, people, and it's our society, and this, it was used as an analogy, if you have a cup from the restaurant and you're walking along the riverfront down there and you don't have a receptacle to put it in, you're just going to throw it over. I don't do that. If I have a cup, I take it home with me. But th that's, that's not going to happen with everyone, I know that. But uh, I do, I take it home with me. And a lot of folks do, and some folks don't. I don't know what the answer to that is. But I will add this, and I'll be quiet, is we're not unique right here in it happening just in Caravelle. I travel a lot, especially from here to Alabama, and I've noticed the roads this winter in Alabama where I go and spend a lot of time, there's trash all up and down the roads in Alabama just like there is here. So anyway, that's just some of my ideas. Okay, good. I like the idea of the uh, raising the fence. You know, if yeah. we can work out on that grant that we can bring that up at least a foot. 
Well, a, a six foot fence. Where it's six, six foot, where it's high enough that they can't get it over the rail. It's not easy. Convenient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And they have to really do. And and even in our discussions, and I know we're we're not. I don't want to get specifically on that subject, but it was mentioned already with Russell, where our fence that we have down there is kind of rickety, if you will. Are you talking about some kind of stainless steel thing this time that's more stable? But anyway, that's that's another subject. But if we raise that enough as a deterrent for them, they can't get it through there, so they're not going to just walk right there to that edge and throw it over. Mm -hmm. And I do like also the, the bear proof garbage cans. Yeah. Uh, that they work well. Um, you know, we could if it comes to it, we can put some bear proof cans down there. You know, but we'll just have to see. And I, I agree wholeheartedly with Commissioner Millinder that when you put garbage cans, we just get loaded up with garbage, household garbage. And a lot of folks don't realize that the city of Carabell taxpayers then have to pay for that garbage to be dumped at the at the landfill. We have to pay our staff to go and pick up that garbage or a contractor on the weekend. And then they have a dumpster at the Streets and Roads Department uh, in their yard. And uh, then that all goes to the landfill and the city of Carabell pays a dumping fee just like any any um, citizen pay a dumping fee at the, at the landfill. And the city of Carabell also pays for the water, the potable water that's used at the fishing station. Um, I think, I don't know if she's stepping, separating that out for the boat ramps fees or not, but maybe we should, we might need to, to look into that. So, uh, you know, when people are using that for cleaning for fish fries or tourists are using it or anybody, then all of us, the city of Carabell pays that water bill to the to the water company, to our water company, which is a separate business from the city of Carabell. So, um, and I like the walk-in cooler. I've seen it uh, several times over there in uh, Mexico Beach before uh, Michael took it that one away. I haven't seen the new facility. It looked to me like people respected it. I didn't see. A, a, anyone around, a supervisor or a park manager or anything like that in the area. It was very clean. There was a fish cleaning station there, a table under the pole barn, and then the walk-in was under the coal bar pole, pole barn, and, and they were stacked up in there in containers, just, just full of any kind of fish you could think of in there, the carcass. Um, and for folks to come and get that and use it for chum is, is, is a good idea. But uh, that's, a, that's an expensive undertaking, a walk-in cooler. That would be something that you'd have to get on a grant, have power put there, you know, sufficient power for that, and, and under a cover. Might redo the fish cleaning station at that point, because it's, it's kind of getting a little run down, someone said. So. Personally, I'm not in favor of the taxpayers paying for somebody else's recreation. I understand now if we could get grants for these things that would be and they they on their boat grant fees now that helps we put that keep that money in a separate account and that goes back to doing whatever right. we need for the boat grant um, the boat grant was just uh, redocked with composite docking and they have I don't know if they put the bumpers on but they have a lot of okay so but new bumpers are going to be put on and if cleats are needed that's all that's all funded through the boat ramp fees so um, the picking up uh, the uh, cleanup miss Tamara the river walk park cleanup mm -hmm. I think it would be good to do that quarterly we'll do it four times a year not just the two times that the Franklin County has their county wide okay. Four times, but and concentrate on that 300 feet of city-owned property there at low tide. And I mean, you know, uh, that could be scheduled well in advance, and it wouldn't take but a couple of hours wow. at that. And and you know, four times a year would would really help that to stay clean. So, and I don't know if we need somebody. We did advertise last fall. We advertised in the fall. It was July or August, and we, we came up with a 
criteria, do the hours, and everything for a boat ramp attendant. And we advertised for that, and we did hope that Mr. Rutland was interested. But it was right at Labor Day, and that was really the end of our season, and so we said, hey, we'll look at this again come March, first of the year. Mm -hmm. And that, is, that, that would help. not be for a police officer like we had this Amber doing, but someone that would be down there that would be putting an envelope on the vehicles that didn't pay their, you know, they don't have a tag hanging, mm -hmm. or they don't have a sticker in the window, but, but a presence down there. Uh -huh. uh, uh, someone that's not a police officer can't enforce anything. They take a picture. They can help. They can help, though, be like a host or a Sense host. of the rest. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, we did. <laughs> okay. I, this, yes, is off, this is off the subject, but are you looking at building more boat ramps because we got the two and it's really getting to be really busy or are you somewhere down the future you're looking at putting in another boat ramp somewhere uh i don't think the city owns any property what about that second one over by wicked willie that's that was when we were kids that was used there for the commercial fishermen but it's the it, when you back up and by sea quarters. quarters but when you back up in it now if you don't know where to get it it's not been used. You know what I'm talking about? The yeah, the that one to make it with it. Yeah. Does it? Yeah, that was Jimmy a trade off. Oh. The one for that piece of property. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we are that we don't have any more property to put no, it's gonna be bad. Property like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the, county, the county owns the one on Timber Island mm -hmm. and I think they're redoing uh -huh. that road mm -hmm. and parking. That's, that's the thing in our boat. Oh, that's got that one over there. <laughs> yeah. So we got three. Uh, yeah. County. County? We have a couple of areas uh, that are more in residential areas, a couple of dead end streets that go to the river, but those would be more for soft launch for kayaking. Yeah. That would be nice to have in the future. Um, so, I mean, do we have any other suggestions or? Uh, ideas at this point i mean we can we can take all of this under consideration we can meet to have another workshop we can do some research i mean i'd like to find out more about requirements for the grinder because we need as much information as we can and if there's requirements we kind of need to know that if we want to make an important decision but if that doesn't work out i think the cooler is and we have locals who have expressed interest in wanting, they want the chunk. Mm -hmm. They will come and get it. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, that's usual. People pay money for that. So I don't think it will be a problem emptying it, but it is another expense. Something else you have to take care of. Yeah, pay the, the, the power bill. On right. It. Uh, and uh, would, would something, do we, does anyone here know on the staff if uh, uh, FERDAP would pay for a walk in cooler? Check Mr. Fox. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. Probably not. But I will check Mr. Fox. The things you have to keep in mind with Fart Out too is they're usually five years out. So if you're looking for a solution soon, yeah. then that's not an that's not an option because as you know, these Fart Out programs take years to get, and then once you get it, it takes years to complete. So. Keep that in the back of your mind because people say, oh, you got a grant for this, but they take about five years right. on average. It's to right. finish it from right. start. Once you get awarded so to finish That would not it. be a quick fix. And uh, I, I could call to Mexico Beach and find out how they got their cooler. And originally, how that was done. Would there be any possibility of having some extra cameras around? You're being fun. <laughs> We have good cameras down there. The problem is we don't have power down there. We don't have oh. internet down there. Uh, we've put solar power cameras. They don't last. Uh -huh. We've put trail cameras. They that you don't have power. You don't have internet. Well, the sheriff came out it's on some property I own that some people were dumping. And they put two video cameras out. That's why I was hoping they'd be here. 
that there wasn't any power. They had their own power. Our, our police department does similar, but that it's not. They can see what's going on. They have to time. put them up and take them down. They're not. Yeah. They're not meant to be put there and yeah, for long term. term. For long term. Well, we could put a fake one up there for <laughs> <laughs> once in a while. A big old camera. Cameras watching you. <laughs> you know, people do that at their houses, you know, but they, for burglars they resist it. Well, the uh, wow. the the picture was the picture will be in the paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the uh, 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 the video recorder and camera on that building pointing down that whole yeah we've tried that too does that have an image does that belong you oh, have to be so close to it it's blurring you can't uh, zoom uh, in once you start zooming in power at the pavilion yeah. now you know what we do have uh, we have a camera that was taken down mm -hmm. from the boat club you, you know uh, it's a 24-hour cam uh, Video cam, live feed. It was on. Got to have internet for that, though. But we need, we need uh, some way. We need internet to, to do that. Put, put it on live feed. You have to have some. Uh, well, I mean, you can put it at the museum, or you can put it at the Coast Guard dock, but that's not down towards the fish cleaning station. Mm -hmm. yeah. And actually, the TDC would publish that. If we have, they would put it on live feed. Get up close. They want to see what you're doing, and then. Okay. If we could so find someone to yes, there's you a, just run power from the pavilion down to the. It's not that far. I, I'm not an electrician. I'm sure you can. But well, there are cameras that uh, you can zoom in and film at that resolution too. I I know of those. So. You see the two fingers up holding. Yeah. Oh, I just have a question. I mean, that dock. And the pavilion are both city owned, correct? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, this is kind of a wild shot, but maybe the fish station, the fish cleaning station, should be out over deep water. Um, that would mean, of course, moving it and running water and everything like mm -hmm. that down to it. But if those two structures already belong to the city, maybe if you have to redo the, the cleaning station, maybe it could be positioned out further mm -hmm. where it's actually yeah. over deep of water. That's, I mean, that's not a cheap solution yeah. by any means, but um, but if, if if it's going to have to be redone anyway, maybe it needs to be moved. And that could be more of a long-term goal for a FERDAP grant, something, uh -huh. you know, long-term. And we have had uh, that uh, similar suggestion is to move that fish cleaning station out to the Coast Guard dock, out there to that big, um, that big dock area. Yeah, I had said that once mm -hmm. before, but we were, we never did for Go anywhere with yeah, but that—that that is the solution, and then it might have to be smaller. Yeah. Then, when they threw it in the river, it's up to FWC to take care of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that is—that is something to, yeah. to think about. It. I mean, it's not deep, deep water, but it's deep enough that the, it's not going to get so low there at low tide. Most of it be add up pretty rapidly. Yeah. Would you have to check with the DEP to see if they would allow that even? Have it over the water like that? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm sure it will require permitting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, Mr. Tamara, Brown. when you used to use that office out on the dock, mm -hmm. there were some cameras. Did they run all the time of showing the river? And they did. On TV? We paid for the internet. Uh huh. The, the waterfront partnership yeah. paid for the phone. Paid for the phone. Yeah. And that was where the internet was. If we had one of those. Looking back this way, uh, I just, but and that's that's what we were talking about. We we do have a camera. The city does mm -hmm. have a, a a camera that does live feed, mm -hmm. but we need yeah. power and we need internet uh -huh. and, and and a computer. And then we could get the TDC to publish it on the TDC website, yeah. and we yeah. could get a link to it and publish it on the uh, Carabell website. Oh, uh, and the CRA website. Yeah. When I was just trying to remember how we did that, when we had it, when our office for the waterfront partnership was on the Coast Guard dock, it was an extension phone from the museum. So we paid the phone and the internet at the museum, and then somehow I don't, 
I don't really know how they did that, but the, we ended up having it was just one bill. One bill, and we paid for the two locations on the one bill. So I don't know if there's a way that it could be part of. Um, part of another city structure, like um, we're paying more. We have the highest level of internet that you can have at the museum that, that our company here allows. So I don't know if there's any way to, to do a, an extension to that building again. I don't really know, but I'm, I'm saying we've got the power to do it as far as the internet strength, but I don't know how that works with these days. It's been 20 years since we did that. It's probably a totally different company. Too. Well, it is three totally different companies yeah. later, but, Attached to the building. but it was... Looking at the river or down Yeah, the we had it as look out at the river, but of course, for what we're trying to accomplish, we could have it look back at the fish. Yeah, and, you know, the t that might be interesting to some people to look at uh, on, the, on the TDC, the fish cleaning station. Yeah, makes a lot of fish. Yeah, uh-huh. Well, that would be a big deterrent. Yeah. Yes, it would be. Yes, it would. And so, I think that that's something worth exploring. Mm -hmm. Don't know that we can financially or feasibly or whatever, but I think that's something worth exploring. Mm -hmm. And the camera, I think it was six, six, seven hundred dollars. That's the, the least expensive part of it. Well, then you need a little computer, a computer that is. And then you got to pay your internet, your phone every, every month. And otherwise, that that's it. Now, there's there's one other aspect to it because I wasn't going to say anything about it. Is to armor it against vandalism. Mm -hmm. I that's, wasn't going to say anything because I didn't want to publicly. But we need to arm it against vandalism well, as far as our good Well, you've got to put another camera on it. We tried it already. We've put them in boxes. We've, put, we've um, done all sorts of things. Uh -huh. And the minute we moved out of that office, somebody stole the air conditioner. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you know, it's just <laughs> where we live. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. All right, so we want to, are we ready to adjourn for now? And, and uh, maybe we'll have another workshop uh, after we do a little bit of research? It sounds like we need to definitely get FWC and um, DEP content. If they won't come and talk to us, maybe we can research the content and report back on that. I don't. And then maybe find out how Mexico Beach paid for their mm -hmm. cooler. <coughs> I think that's that's good. We need just follow up on some of the things. Okay, and uh, once we get some information, we'll we'll schedule another workshop in you know a couple of months or so. And you all want to gather some information? Be sure you can let any of us know. The fishing season's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. And we may want to, in the interim, consider having someone down there on the, on the busy weekends mm -hmm. just to help out with uh, collecting the fees, because we need the fees to do whatever, what, whatever we're going to do here uh, in the long run, and, and to help, uh, you know, just be a presence, as Ben Courtney said. And like I said, we, we already have voted to do that and yeah. advertised for that. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Can, can we adjourn? Is that all right? Are you all Thank ready you. to adjourn? adjourn? Now look, before I adjourn, after I adjourn, we're going to have a birthday cake for Frank. Oh. We're going to happy birthday to Commissioner Mathis. He's going to be 87 tomorrow. Yeah, he said happy birthday. Okay, all right. So this workshop is adjourned, and we're going to sing happy birthday. But uh, will someone get the 